Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Chi Chi is one of the most memed Genshin characters of all time, and the cause of many players' grief and rage with their banner pulls. But with Farina's release, healers like her have found new relevance, giving us a good opportunity to revisit her in an updated guide video. We'll discuss her kit and gameplay, as well as its issues and how to address them, constellations, best weapon and artifact builds, and team comps that she can be maximized in. It's time to grow some backbone and dig this zombie out of her grave. Speaking of backbone, that's this video's sponsor. I I am terrible at playing Genshin on mobile, but check this out. The Backbone One, a mobile controller for iPhone and Android. But wait, doesn't Genshin in fact have no controller support for Android devices? Well, you'll find a touch sync function that maps the touchscreen input to the controller buttons, and they even have controls mapped for underwater exploration. The input in the settings page is still set to touchscreen, but now the Backbone is touching your screen for you. Kind of. This is a great way to play Genshin on the go, whether because you're not great at playing through a touchscreen, prefer controllers, or just want to be able to grip your device better while playing. It's compact, simple, and fits well in my hands. Also, press the orange button to launch Backbone's app and it shows you all the games you can play with the Backbone, communicate with friends, and even record and edit gameplay clips. It's what makes it feel even more like a console. So if you're interested in getting one, go to playbackbone.com or use the link in the description below. Thank you Backbone for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to it. Chi Chi is the standard banner 5 star cryo unit that specializes in strong healing. She can assume either an off field or on field playstyle depending on her preferred role in the team. Let's take a look at her abilities to understand how she works, what her issues are, and how to put her to good use. Chi Chi's normal attacks consist of a 5 hit combo sequence and a 20 stamina charged attack. You can build Chi Chi to dish out more damage from her normal and charged attacks using a physical DPS build, but it's fine if they don't deal big damage because they have other important purposes to fulfill. For one, when using her as an on-field driver, these attacks will mainly drive ally abilities that require normal attacks like Singcho, Yelan, and Beidou's Burst. Moreover, Chi Chi's sword attacks will heal your party quickly in tandem with her skill. Casting Chi Chi's skill deals an initial cryo hit around her and creates the Herald of Frost, which is a cryo orb that follows your active character for 15 seconds and mainly does three things. First, during her skill, Chi Chi's normal and charged attack hits heal your entire party or nearby co-op teammates, and the healing amount scales on Chi Chi's attack stat, as is the case for all her healing sources. Fortunately, it also heals even if the hits deal no damage, like when fighting shielded or armored enemies. Though note that only Chi Chi triggers this effect, so switching to another character and using their normal attacks will not heal at all. By spamming Chi Chi's attacks, this can very quickly heal your entire party to bring them back from near death or to counter Rift Town Corrosion or Farina's HP draining. Second, the Herald of Frost heals the active character periodically over time for a total of 4 times. And third, the orb continues swipes around your character to hit nearby enemies, it can also apply cryo to enemies following standard ICD rules. The damage dealt by her skill isn't much though, so this will mainly be for its healing utility and cryo application over time. However, Chi Chi's skill has two very significant issues. First, it does not generate cryo energy particles. This means she cannot battery herself and has to rely on other sources of particles, which makes recharging her burst cost harder. Another detriment of having no particle generation is that Chi Chi has no contribution to helping battery three teammates, which means that her teammates may have higher ER requirements if she's on the team. One more issue of her skill is that it has a very long cooldown of 30 seconds. In many rotations that generally last around 20 seconds, this can result in awkward skill downtimes. For her Ascension 1 passive, if a character affected by her skill triggers a reaction, then they get a 20% incoming healing bonus for 8 seconds. This increases the healing a character receives, not the healing they provide. You don't have to think too hard about activating this though, since her healing even without this bonus applies applied will be quite a lot already, but it definitely still helps boost her healing. Moving on, casting Chi Chi's burst deals an instance of AoE cryo damage and marks nearby opponents with a fortune preserving talisman for 15 seconds, which is a source of healing. If your character hits that enemy, they will get healed for a large amount. Now, there are some things the description doesn't clarify well enough. For instance, as long as a character's attack hits, even if no damage is dealt, the healing still occurs. This healing only occurs every one second though, so there's a trigger limitation. However, this mark can only heal the active character that hits the marked enemy, so it's not simultaneous party-wide healing unlike when she attacks during her skill. In this example, Kaya is off-field and his burst is the only thing hitting the enemy, yet he doesn't get healed. Whereas, if I switch him on-field while hitting with his burst, he can now get the healing tick. 
So aside from her skill, this is a big source of single target healing that Chi Chi can provide even from off field. If you want the burst to heal other party members, you need to swap and let them deal damage while on field. If multiple allies need healing this way, then you'll have to quick swap among them to distribute the healing. Another way to apply this mark is with her A4 passive. Hitting enemies with her normal or charge attack has a 50% chance to apply the same fortune preserving talisman effect from her burst. However, this only lasts 6 seconds and has a long cooldown of 30 seconds. It's an extra source of healing, but the cooldown is very long and the duration is very short to feel as consistent. The main issue with her burst though is that due to its high energy cost of 80 plus Chi Chi's inability to generate her own particles, it's more difficult to recharge this. As a result, it's possible that it might not be as feasible to burst every rotation and if her skill and A4 passive are on cooldown while her burst is inactive, that can lead to some downtime on her healing. This might not be a huge problem if the team doesn't need it, but in cases where you're taking a lot of damage or like with Farina who constantly drains your team's HP, then you'll want Chi Chi to have consistent healing uptime. One solution is to alternate the use of her skill and burst every rotation, rather than use them at the same time. This can help ensure a constant source of healing every rotation. It's also possible to trigger her A4 passive's mark in between healing downtimes, but since the duration is short and the cooldown is also very long, it might not be very reliable. Another solution is to build her with a lot of energy recharge to burst every rotation, so that even on rotations where her skill isn't active, her burst can be used in instead since it has a shorter cooldown of 20 seconds. However, the ER requirement can get pretty high depending on the team's particle generation and since she can't even create particles herself. This will most likely require the use of an ER weapon plus ample ER rolls on her artifacts or even an ER sands. There are actually specific weapons that can really help address these potential issues, which I'll discuss more in the weapons section. For her exploration passive, Chi Chi reveals Lyra's unique resources on your minimap. For her talent levels, prioritize her skill and burst as her healing sources. As for her normal attack level, it's much lower priority, especially if you want to save materials, but you can level it up based on your preference or if you're trying to build her as a normal charged attack DPS. And so you can basically use Chi Chi as an on-field or off-field unit. An on-field playstyle will provide persistent healing mainly through her combined skill and normal attacks. She deals physical damage with her attacks and drives any relevant teammate abilities. Then you can activate her burst as needed to provide extra healing, especially if her skill isn't up. Meanwhile, if Chi Chi is a primarily off-field support, she uses her skill and burst to provide healing over time to the active character. Then if ever your team is in need of emergency healing, she can take some time on-field to use her normal attacks while her skill is active, which can quickly bring your team back to high HP. Now let's see what Chi Chi will gain from more 50-50 losses to her. C1 gives her a way to generate her own energy with specific conditions. If the enemy is hit by the Herald of Frost while they're affected by the Fortune Preserving Talisman status, then that can generate 2 flat energy to Chi Chi per hit. This can definitely help reduce her ER needs, but it's far from being a definitive fix to her energy issues. Using the other solutions I recommend in this video will generally have a greater impact on addressing her rotation and energy issues. With C2, Chi Chi's normal and charge attack damage gets a 15% damage bonus if hitting enemies affected by cryo. This is a minor boost if you're not building her for physical damage anyway, and it can be unreliable if she's not on a team that can maintain the cryo aura consistently enough. C3 increases her burst level by 3. C4 makes enemies marked by fortune preserving talisman get a 20% attack decrease. It somewhat increases your survivability by reducing your enemy's damage by a bit, but is generally unnecessary when Chi Chi already heals a ton. C5 increases her skill level by 3, and C6 now gives her burst the ability to revive all fallen party members every 15 minutes. It's hard to imagine needing this when Chi Chi's already on the team, and it would have been better if it unlocked a more impactful upgrade, but it is what it is. Also, if you actually have a C6 Chi Chi, then I'm so sorry to hear that, unless you actually wanted it. Now on to Chi Chi's weapon options. First of all, there are two weapons that I very highly recommend due to their valuable utility in helping fix her kit's main issues. These are the Sacrificial Sword and Favonius Sword, which, aside from contributing a lot of ER, have very useful passives for her. The Sacrificial Sword has a chance to reset the skill's cooldown when the wearer's skill damages an enemy. For Chi Chi, this helps with her long skill cooldown issue and allows you to consistently use her skill every rotation, resulting in very reliable healing uptime. It also makes her burst healing way 
way less important since you can totally rely on her skill healing already. Additionally, being able to use the skill more consistently also allows for more cryo application, which can be helpful in teams where Chi Chi's cryo application is used to maintain freeze or superconduct on enemies. You do want it at high refinement, like R3 to R5, mainly so that the passive's cooldown also aligns with most rotation times. On the other hand, the Favonia Sword gives the user a chance to generate universal energy particles upon landing a crit hit while they're on field, which practically solves Chi Chi's inability to generate particles. This means she can now help battery not just herself, but also the entire team, leading to lower ER requirements for everyone. It's still viable even at low refinements, but of course, it's better at high refinements for the higher trigger chance and shorter cooldown of the passive effect. If she's being played with a lot of on-field time, she'll have more chances of proccing the particles. If she's mostly off-field though, then you could trigger its effect when she casts her skill or burst, or by landing a couple of normal attacks if it hasn't triggered yet. With its energy recharge stat and added energy particles, it's now easier to use Chi Chi's burst every rotation for a consistent healing mechanic even if her skill isn't as frequently active. Since these two weapons are so useful in supplementing her kit's shortcomings, they do have a lot of value on her. Aside from them, the alternative weapons have very general criteria. If you want more reliable burst uptime from her but don't have the two aforementioned swords, swords with an ER subset can generally help in that regard. To maximize her healing, go for swords that give attack percent bonuses and or have a high base attack. There are a lot that fall under that category. If you're trying to build her as a normal charge attack DPS, then you should also consider swords that give crit stats and or damage bonus buffs. Now onto Chi Chi's artifact build, which I'll simplify into two categories. If you want a healing focus build that can suit both her off-field support or on-field driver role, then she'd want an attacker ER Sans, an attack goblet, and a healing bonus or attack circlet. An ER Sans is viable if you're trying to make her burst every rotation and you can't get enough ER are from substats or you're not using an ER weapon like Sacrificial or Favonius Sword. A healing bonus circlet will heal more than an attack circlet and it might be possible to use a crit rate circlet if you're using a Favonius Sword, but you can get crit rate from her substats anyway so it's not really that necessary. For substats, you mainly want attack percent, then depending on your build you can get some ER as needed if you're trying to optimize her burst uptime or crit rate if you're using the Favonius Sword. The target best in slot artifact set is the Ocean Hued Clam. This gives her healing bonus and more importantly, it converts her healing into damage. With this set, a bubble is periodically created and popped that deals AoE physical damage based on the total healing she's provided, even counting over healing. With Chi Chi's huge healing potential, it'll be easy to reach the cap, or at least close to it. And since the damage is AoE, it makes Chi Chi more effective against multi-target scenarios. Basically, it's a perfect set to boost both her healing and damage output. There's a new healing set called Song of Days Pass that has another essay of a description. Basically, it records Converts the amount healed for 6 seconds up to 15,000 HP healed and afterwards converts 8% of that into a flat base damage buff for your active character, which seems to be similar to Shenhe's and Yunjin's buff mechanic, though less potent. For Chi Chi, the set's effect is generally going to be a side grade to the clam set. The buff effect and rotation timing also have some particular considerations to work with, such as field time and the stats of the character you want to buff, whereas the clam set just lets you heal and pop. Consider also that the clam set is now accessible through the strong box, while this song set is only obtainable through its domain. If you're not farming for its paired geo set, then I don't think it's worth just farming for this set. If you haven't progressed far enough yet, then you won't have access anyway either. I'll take a closer look at this once it releases and possibly have a follow-up video, but for now, I would generally recommend sticking to the clam set for Chi Chi between these two. A potential alternative is the four-star instructor set if she's used in a bloom, hyperbloom, or burgeon team. It gives your entire team a 120 EM bonus if the user triggers a reaction on field which she can constantly refresh to boost the dendro-based reaction damage of your teammates. Another alternative is the tenacity of the Millilith set, mainly for its team-wide attack buff when the user's skill hits an enemy, though you should only consider this if Chi Chi's teammates are attack scaling. The Sacrificial Sword is recommended for this so that her skill will be active every rotation. The alternative build aims to turn her into a hybrid healer DPS, where you're building her normal or charged attacks to hit harder. I ultimately don't recommend this as much anymore as an Ocean Hued Clam build can actually out damage these older DPS builds. And this DPS build requires investing into crit stats, which has relatively lower returns on Chi Chi versus other dedicated DPSs. But if it's something you still want to try, then go ahead. You want an attack sans, physical damage goblet, and crit circlet, plus attack and crit substat rolls. For the artifact set, since we're trying to boost her physical attacks, a combination of two-piece physical set plus a two-piece attack or other two-piece physical set, or even two-piece marichose, will offer useful set bonuses while having more flexibility to choose good 
substats. A four-piece Marichose set gives a normal and charge attack damage bonus and more importantly, a huge crit rate buff, but this will ideally be used in a Farina team to consistently proc the four-piece effect. The Gladiator's Finale set is also viable as it gives unconditional normal attack damage and attack bonuses, but the main downside is that it doesn't buff her charge attack. The Pale Flame set might look like it's her best physical set, but I wouldn't recommend going for it anymore. The reason is because the four-piece effect needs skill damage to trigger its bonus effect, but since her cooldown is too long and you wouldn't want to use the Sacrificial Sword on this DPS build, the four-piece bonus will have significant downtime. A two-piece two-piece set combo has unconditional bonuses with around a four substat difference versus a Pale Flame set, and the Mara Chausse Hunter can outperform it. Lastly, let's go through Chi Chi's team synergies and roles. In general, Chi Chi can just slot in your team as your healer, whether as an off-field support or an on-field driver. She doesn't need to have any special reaction synergy, and her healing will be more than enough in most scenarios. You should be aware though that there will very often be better teammate alternatives in various team templates rather than her. But what you can rely on is that she guarantees a lot of comfort, as long as you utilize her healing abilities properly. If that's something you value, whether for overworld fights or domains, then Chi Chi is a great pick for keeping your team very healthy and your experience very comfy. Now with Farina, who really wants healing in the team, Chi Chi has gained a lot more value thanks to her fast healing capabilities. That helps Farina quickly stack her fanfare damage bonus and ensure that your team is constantly at high health even as she drains the entire party's HP. In the various templates I'll mention, they'll have a hydro slot where Farina is an option, and Chi Chi will have great synergy with her. So let's check out what these team templates are. One team where Chi Chi has more potential is in a taser team, which involves having hydro and electro units to deal raw high damage and triggered electro charged. With Chi Chi's cryo application combined with electro, this can trigger superconduct, which lowers the enemy's physical resistance. That means both Chi Chi's physical attacks and the ocean hued clam bubble pops will do more damage. You'll also see a bit of freeze up time from the combined cryo and hydro application, so that helps crowd control the enemies a bit, assuming the enemies can be frozen, of course. Some stable taser teammates also need their ability to be triggered or driven by an on-field unit's normal attacks, notably Singcho, Yelan, and Beidou. So Chi Chi can assume the driver role while the rest of her teammates are off-field. If Chi Chi's not the main on-field driver, you can instead have another unit assume more on-field time. Chi Chi will mostly heal from off-field and use her normal attacks and skill to heal fast in emergency situations. You could do away with the Hydro unit and just use Chi Chi for enabling Superconduct, whether to enhance her own physical damage or that of another physical DPS like Razor, for example. A freeze team is also an option which can permafreeze enemies or have high freeze up time on them. Chi Chi's healing is already overkill since such teams don't take that much damage due to freezing enemies and mostly preventing them from dealing damage in the first place. But at the very least, she can provide cryo application over time with her skill and she can be your on-field driver if you have hydro applicators like Yelan and Sing Cho. And if you're using Farina here, then Chi Chi's healing will definitely be more appreciated. A niche way to play Chi Chi in freeze teams is to infuse Chi Chi's normal attacks with cryo application from Chongyun's skill field. This transforms her into more of a cryo DPS, which can also slightly change her preferred build, like switching to a cryo damage goblet instead of physical. Up next are Bloom-based Denjo teams. The first variant is a pure Bloom team, but slotting Chi Chi in turns this into a Freeze Bloom team, also known as Fridge team. Generally, Bloom teams aren't as great without Nilu, who greatly buffs Bloom damage, but Nilu-less Bloom teams are still technically an option. A Bloom team tries to continuously generate new cores as fast as possible, so they can force the old cores to explode sooner as well. Chi Chi can then apply Cryo to freeze enemies, which can complement Denjo core generation and crowd control enemies to help keep them in place for the AoE Bloom damage. To upgrade a Bloom team, you can insert either a Null Field Electro or Pyro unit who can effectively apply their elements on the cores to trigger Hyper Bloom or Burgeon respectively. Kuki or Raiden are the top recommendations for Hyper Bloom triggers thanks to their convenient off-field Electro application mechanics, though if you don't have them, other off-field Electro applicators can still do the job. She can also freeze enemies to crowd control them and potentially help with Denja core generation resulting in more Hyper Blooms. For Burgeon, I generally recommend Toma, but other off field pyro triggers can also work. Chi Chi will typically assume the on-field driver role, so it's preferable for her teammates to be primarily off-field types. And since she provides a lot of healing already, you don't need any other healing sources to keep your team comfortable. Her cryo can help weaken the burning aura, which will also help with dendro core generation and help trigger more potential burgeons. Hyperbloom teams are particularly great for their high damage floors and easy gameplay while not needing very high investment. If you're still building up your potential teams, I highly recommend adding a Hyperbloom team to your arsenal especially if you're targeting the later floors of Spiral Abyss. But Burgeon teams can still be quite effective, especially in AoE scenarios that maximize Burgeon's AoE damage. 
And that's it for this Chi Chi guide. Despite the various issues of her kit, she's very good at keeping her team alive. So whether you're interested in building her because you recently got Farina or lost your 50-50 to her, or both, I hope she's at least able to give you a comfy time. But let me know what you think of her in the comments and who you plan on playing her with. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care.